gals and welcome back to my channel oh my gosh sorry guys this has been a long week i hope you're not judging the tea it's a pajama day for me so tonight i'm going to be covering the parent the parent family haunting which is also the inspiration behind the conjuring so if you guys are ready to get on into it we're gonna get right on into it we're gonna have a lazy day because covid's got me wildin', guys i mean we're really lucky that i even got up to put up makeup on at this point because we've been inside for a while so i'm sure most of you have probably seen the movie the conjuring because it was a huge hit a lot like annabelle it was the first one of the series and it came out and all of this was based around the Perrin family, which moved into a farmhouse. They moved into a farmhouse and weird things started to happen. So we're gonna talk about them and also the investigators that investigated them, which was the famous Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now Ed Warren was a World War II veteran as well as a former police officer who later became a self-professed demonologist. And his wife Lorraine was a clairvoyant who claimed that she was able to communicate with the demons that Ed investigated. So together they made quite a team. In 1952, Ed and Lorraine founded the New England Society for Psychic Research and currently it is the most, or sorry, is the oldest ghost hunting group in New England. And they very quickly gained respect in the ghost hunting community because of their part in the Amneville house hauntings. Like they were very, very prominent in that caught a lot of evidence and became very respected and very popular. So this is going to be the true story of the conjuring or the parent family haunting, which was one of their most famous cases other than obviously Amneville and I think the Edin the Edinville. Another thing we're going to cover, but right now we're getting into the conjuring, so hold on tight. In 1971, the parent family moved into a 14 room farmhouse in Ro in Harrisville, Rhode Island, where Karen and Roger and their five daughters almost immediately noticed strange things happening in this farmhouse right after moving in. Things were going on. Things were getting a little weird. It started off relatively small, like Karen would notice that the broom would go missing or it would be moved from room to room. She would also hear things scraping on the kettle in the kitchen, which wasn't really explained. And small piles of dirt appearing on like a newly freshly cleaned floor. So every time she mopped the floor in the house or cleaned, she would notice these little tiny piles, almost like little ant hills of dirt just would appear for no reason. Their five daughters, however, would notice spirits around the house, but most of them mostly left them alone, but there was a few that became malicious. Carolyn actually allegedly researched the history of the house and found out that it had been in the same family for about eight generations. And many people that lived in the house had all died of mysterious circumstances or horrible cir circumstances. Bad ways to die. Not good. Several children actually drowned in the nearby creek. There was a murder in the house as well as a couple hangings in the attic of the house. So... The spirit that was actually depicted in the film, Bathsheba the Witch, was the worst of them all, or so they say. Whoever Bathsheba was, she perceived herself to be the mistress of the house, so she was the one that was really causing the most problems. She resented Carolyn's role in the house as the mother, so she basically tried to fight her for that position. And all this was said by Andrea Perrin, who was the oldest of the five daughters. It turns out that Beth Sheba was actually a real person who did, in fact, live in that house. Her name was Beth Sheba Sherman, and she lived in that house in the 1800s. And Beth Sheba was actually rumored to be a Satanist, and there is evidence that she was involved in the death of a neighbor's child. Although no trial ever took place for the death of this child, and... Nothing really came of that. According to Andrea, they would actually experience other spirits as well that would make their house smell like rotting flesh and their beds to levitate or rise off the ground on their own. She claims that her father would actually enter the basement and feel a cold, stinking presence behind him that he could never explain. So he would avoid going into the basement as much as he could. But because it was an old house, 
things failed, like their heating equipment would fail and it would make Roger venture down into the basement where that presence would just linger around him. Over the 10 years that that family lived in this farmhouse, the uh, Warrens would make trips back and forth to investigate. At one point, Lorraine actually conducted a seance to bring forth the spirits that were possessing the family. And during that seance, Carolyn Perrin actually became possessed and started to speak in tongues. And the chair that she was sitting in with herself in it, much depicted like the film, began to rise and levitate on its own in front of everybody during this seance. Andrea, the oldest daughter, actually claims to have snuck down and witnessed this seance when she wasn't supposed to. She got out of bed and watched it happen. And in her words, this is what she said. Now I'm just going to read it as she said it off of my phone, just because I can't really remember her exact words, but her exact words, I thought I was going to pass out, Andrea said. My mother began to speak in a language not of this world, in a voice not of her own, and her chair levitated and she was thrown across the room. And although in the movie it's depicted that Ed did an exorcism and tried to clear the uh, spirit out of Carolyn, that never actually happened. Lorraine says that you have to be an ordained minister with the Catholic Church to do so, so they would never attempt one. So that part is just the movie magic when he has his hand on her head and he's getting all the, all the demons out of her. Didn't actually happen in real life. After the seance that Lorraine brought forward, Roger actually kicked the Warrens out of his house because he was scared for his wife's mental stability after her speaking in tongues and levitating off the floor from the spirits that were possessing her body. According to Andrea, they actually lived in that house for many more years because of the instability. They weren't able to move. They didn't have the money to move until they finally moved out in 1980. At which point it said that everything was silenced, the haunting stopped and nothing really followed them. So moving turned out to be a good thing for them, but maybe not for the years that they suffered with this attack like the spirits attached to them i can't imagine going home every day and having someone move my stuff or like float my bed around or possess my mom like not cool guys like it turns out that this family just dealt with this for 10 years 10 years of their life because they weren't able to move out and the, this spirit would come and be doing these things to them and they would come home like i can't imagine not having a safe place to be being haunted in my own house. Like, here's my five sisters just hanging out, mom and dad, and over and over and over again, it doesn't matter what you do, this spirit is just still on your back. You can't get away from it. Luckily that it didn't follow them after they moved, but for a haunting that has that much activity, like poltergeist, it's moving things, it's levitating people, it's creeping up on them, whether in the basement trying to fix their heating equipment, I don't know how they did it, but turns out in the story, it, it did have a happy ending and I'm very happy for them. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this time and I hope you guys are going to come back for my next video. So thank you all for visiting. Uh, next time, I don't know if we're going to be rocking the PJ, but we'll see because it's COVID and this is life now. I actually have been ordering off of Amazon quite a bit and my new backdrop came in the mail. I don't know when, but soon enough, we are not going to be behind or in front of my fireplace anymore, we're going to have a different backdrop. So if you guys like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you want to. And if any of you have any of your own stories that you would like to email me, I'd be glad to hear them. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.